My name's Guy Kesterman and I've been a professional bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, the bike I'm unveiling from under this blanket is the Radical NS Bikes Synonym TR1. Super light, 120 mil, radical angled, Polish XC trail bike. And there's a lot of details and interesting stuff to talk about on this bike. So I'm gonna come up there, grab the camera and we'll get up close with some of the tech. So there are two versions of the NS Synonym. There is the uh, Synonym RC, uh, which is a 100 mil travel uh, lightweight race bike. And then there's this, the Synonym TR. And there's actually two different versions of each bike. And interestingly, they both use the same mould for the front end. Uh, the difference is that this TR gets a slightly sturdier carbon layup, so it's 150 grams heavier. And also, uh, the shock on the RC is a 37.5 mil stroke, so it gives 100 mil. This is a 42.5 mil stroke, uh, so you're getting 120 mil at the back. And up front, you're getting uh, Fox's excellent uh, 34 factory float. SC, so it's got that step cast cutaway on the bottom of the leg, uh, making it you know a competitively light uh, XC kind of crossover trail fork, and that's exactly the whole kind of purpose of this bike. Uh, you know, is that increasingly blurred line between sort of light enough to race and tough enough to ride really, really hard. And what makes this bike stand out in particular? is the geometry. I mean, a lot of coverage uh, came out of Eurobike on this bike, uh, simply because the angles are properly Enduro Radical. Uh, you've got a 66 degree uh, head tube, and then you've got a 76 degree uh, seat tube effective angle there. And between them on this large, you've got a 491 mil reach. And uh, even things like the bottom bracket height are uh, pretty radical. Uh, 38 mil BB drop uh, below the axle height, uh, that equates to a 328 uh, sort of bottom bracket height. So it's not only is it long at the front and relatively slack, it's also uh, really low slung. Uh, back end is relatively long. That's a 438 mil chainstay. So there are bikes that tuck it in a bit tighter at the rear end. Uh, but overall, I mean, that obviously extends the wheelbase and makes the whole bike even more stable. You know, you're looking at a wheelbase of 1,232 uh, centimetres on this large size. Uh, the only thing I would say is that I've already set it to uh, my standard saddle height, which is uh, just under 75 centimetres and I'm right on the collar there on this large because that seat tube is really, really long. So, uh, you know, you, then you even if you'd normally fit a large, you might be touch and go whether you'll still get the right saddle height. But even at 466 mil, uh, you know, the medium frame is still as long as most large frames from other manufacturers. So the likelihood is you're getting a pretty radical shaped bike. So that's the basic chassis. Uh, what does the kit look like? Starting up front, as we're here, uh, you've got this NS 760mm bar with NS super soft grips. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, nice shaped collar. As you'll see as you go through, uh, a lot of bronze detailing here. Uh, we've got, you know, bronze collars on there. You've got a bronze headset spacers there. Uh, bronze detailing on the stem. Uh, I would say the stem is relatively long. It's 60 mil on medium through extra large. Uh, only the small gets a 50 mil stem. So we might have to play about with that during testing. I know other people have said that they've switched to a shorter stem. And that, that kind of would make sense with the short offset fork and that head angle on the long reach. Uh, I might try a 40 or even shorter just to see how that tweaks out. But anyway, that's that's further down the line. Uh, like I said, so you've got NS cockpit and then you've got a mix of different kit on here. You've got SRAM Eagle uh, GX shifters. You've got SRAM level TL brakes. So that's the kind of lighter weight uh, XC brake in the SRAM lineup. But as you can see, you've got 180 mil rotor down there at the front. And although the spec actually says it should be 160 at the rear, it's actually 180 on that bike. So you are getting reasonable stopping power on this. And as you can see, there is a whole load of cabling going on here. Uh, that's because not only have you got a dropper post, uh, it's 150 mil on medium through XL, 130 mil on the small size, but you've also got twin cables here for the lockout. Uh, and that's because you've got both front and rear lockout. So it's a twin position lever, push it forward and the shock and the fork are open. 
and then shut it, the fork locks out, and then at the rear, the rear shock locks out simultaneously. So you're getting pretty much a fully rigid ride as soon as you uh, click that button to lock everything off. Uh, but in open, it's certainly not plush. They haven't done uh, what Trek do and make a really, really open setting. Uh, it's still got quite a lot of anti-squat in there, so it naturally pedals pretty tightly. And it's quite a progressive uh, shock stroke most of the way through the travel. Uh, as you can see, uh, this layout looks a lot like a Scott Spark. You know, the uh, shock's upside down, so you've got minimum unsprung weight at the top. And it also means that the remote can feed straight into the frame. Plus, it means uh, NS can use a trunnion mount there, so the whole shock sits on bearings, so there's kind of minimal stiction uh, in the bushings. A uh, little short uh, one-piece linkage there, doing a nice job of keeping things stiff, one would hope. And, you know, there's some big old chunky bits of uh, carbon fibre in here, uh, so the whole bike should be uh, relatively stiff. As you can see, uh, you've got main pivot down here, single ring specific so pl plenty of breadth in that and then as you come back here there's no sort of full bearing pivot you're just uh, using the uh, flex in the rear stays to actually let that linkage and the main pivot work together uh, to produce what's basically a kind of a, a single pivot linkage driven architecture because the flex is occurring up here not down here in the chain stays uh, going back to transmission you've got an x01 rear mech as the highlight uh, but the uh, the cassette is just a uh, 1275 cassette. So again, it's a GX spec cassette and it's a GX spec shifter. So there's, I mean, it's fairly keenly priced. You're getting a uh, Fox factory shock front and rear. You're getting a full carbon frame and it comes in for 5,399 in the UK or a, a euro under six grand uh, if you're buying it in Europe. And you know, you get, so you're getting a reasonable amount of kit here. I mean, the Fox transfer dropper post isn't Kashima version, uh, but Fox, you know, a Fox transfer is still a good post to have on your bike. Maybe the mixed strand transmission takes it down a couple of pegs. Uh, but you're still getting carbon crank, you know, it's lightweight, it's dub, it is press fit, which uh, not all high mileage mi riders are going to be happy about, but that does mean you're getting a much broader stance in terms of the bearing support, so that should give good stiffness when you step on the pedals. Uh, and of course, on any bike, the wheels are pretty important, especially if you got one that you want to pick up speed and carry speed well so you've got ns's own enigma light rims uh, built onto their own hubs and they are loud so if you're tracking someone down on the trail they are going to know you're coming for them uh, which you know has its psychological advantages although some people might prefer a slightly more stealthy setup in terms of tires you've got a maxis icon 29 by 2.35 on the rear it's 3C compound, but it's the fastest, hardest max speed compound. So, uh, you know, plenty of volume on there. You can see it's a good, nice rounded carcass, uh, but you are uh, getting a good fast roll out of it as well. And then up front, you've got a Recon 29 by 2.4. So a uh, more aggressive tire. I mean, still, you know, a fast rolling XC tire, but you know, with a bit more side bite and a bit more braking bite in the front. So you can lean a little bit heavier onto the bike in turns and on the brakes, which, you know, obviously you don't, if you've got an aggressive, progressive geometry setup, you don't want a front tire that's gonna let you down. So good to see a bit more bite up the front there. Uh, in terms of overall weight, uh, this large sample comes in at 12.2 kilos without the pedals on. I mean, it's almost exactly the same as that Canyon Neuron SLX that I tested uh, the other month, uh, which has 130 mil of travel. So it's not the lightest bike in its category, but then, you know, you have got a factor in that extra length. So it's definitely on that kind of cusp of XC trail rather than it being a pure XC bike. But, you know, you have got a more chunky uh, frame there. You've got and obviously, like I say, you've got a much longer, uh, much bigger frame to contend with as well. And, you know, they've stayed with things like the 34 fork rather than having gone for, a, you know, the 32. So there's some extra muscle that's going to be appreciated up front there as well. Oh, one nice one detail I forgot to say is thankfully, and this is very rare and it's disappointingly rare, is they've actually gone for a proper 34 tooth eagle chain ring there. So 
you have actually got a decent tall gear. Uh, if you are a fast rider with some muscle behind you, you're going to be able to crank this bike properly quickly. In terms of other frame detailing, you've got some neat items like this replaceable gear hanger, also uh, kind of holds the end of the through axle there, you know, for a nice smooth finish on that. Uh, it's internal cable routing all the way through. You know, it pops out for a little bit through this trough here and potentially that is going to be a bit of a swimming pool in really wet weather but that is always going to be a drawback of having the shock mounted like that uh you've got three bottle mount bosses so you can put an everything cage in there for bike packing or you can just run your bottle at two different heights and obviously there's plenty of room in that main triangle not just for a bottle but for your strap on inner tube and your mini tool whatever else you want to carry in there in an enduro fashion and then up front you've got these neat little uh, screw in cable uh, clamps there so there's no rattle or shake with the cabling in the frame so it should be pretty quiet and then just moving back down the frame again uh, that relatively long chainstay length means that even with symmetrical chainstays uh, you're still getting a reasonable amount of mudroom around that 2.35 tyre so it should be a good all-weather setup and then as the final bit of detailing on the bike I want to talk about you've got these straight pull hubs front and rear uh, for the 28 spoked uh, wheel setup it's a bladed spoke so uh, you know, they generally build into a nice tight wheel, even though there's only 28 spokes there. And then you've got these Fratelli uh, Dynamo Alloy uh, Enigma uh, rims. And you can't bit a bit of uh, cheesy rap lyrics uh, engraved onto your rims. They see me rolling, they hating. Uh, tubeless ready i don't remember that uh, particular line in the song and the other cheesy win are these uh, ns branded uh, rubber uh, hub cleaners hub cleaners are something i haven't really seen since the 70s but you know why not uh, they don't add a ton of weight and uh, they keep the barrel of your hubs clean and if you really don't like them just cut them off with a pair of scissors but anyway they're, they're nicely color coordinated into this overall feel of the bike and i have to say i mean the geometry is eye-catching anyway but all the detailing and kind of the build does make it look like a really, really high class bike. So that's the unveiling and tech talk round done. Uh, it's Thursday night, which means it's Thursday night fight club, which means a bunch of us are meeting up for the first time in a while, actually, uh, to go and uh, carve some trails over the local moors. Uh, obviously, nicely social distanced because uh, we don't want to be uh, contravening any regulations or giving each other the lurgy. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see whether this is a bike that puts me off the front of the group or uh, as me coughing me lung out on the back of the group. But I have to say, a lightweight 120mm travel uh, enduro shaped 29er should be pretty much perfect for uh, a bit of uh, competitive uh, trail action tonight. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you don't already subscribe, thank you very much to the 15,000 people who do subscribe now. Uh, if you don't, become another one. Uh, click for notifications so you know when my next video goes live. Uh, thank you very much also to my Patreon supporters who put a small monthly contribution towards the channel uh, in return for exclusive early and extended edits and obviously thanks to NS uh, for sending me the bike into test and I'll keep you updated on where the official test of this bike will be appearing. There'll likely be a written test on Bike Radar and I'll probably do a live ride review for the Patreon subscribers as well. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV talking about the NS Bikes Synonym TR1.